G'day! I've been meaning to make a follow-up video reviewing the performance of the Solar Tracker I built during the WST-03-2 controller. Links to the videos I refer to are in the description below. Then I was watching one of Andrew St. Pierre White's videos on his excellent 4X Overland YouTube channel where he discussed using solar panels when travelling and camping. I like Andrew's videos, his sort of travelling is not what I aspire to and the modifications he makes to vehicles are, while interesting and highly specific to what he wants to do and how he wants to do it, not generally suitable for my sort of travelling. However, his points about solar panels when camping were correct, the need with fixed panels to park the vehicle facing the sun or with a portable panel to keep it moving to get the best output. But I couldn't help thinking, if you're only stopping overnight or for a day, why bother? The panels he was using were only producing a few amps and only for short periods. Start the vehicle and you'd have at least 100 amps available on any modern vehicle, way more than a small battery bank could absorb. If you really need more power, a short engine one would produce far more than hours of fiddling with small panels. Under these circumstances, an erected solar panel starts to make sense. If it tracks the sun and generates significantly more power when doing so, then the tracker starts to become viable. We've had my tracker for about six months and I've learned a couple of things. Firstly, mount the linear actuator so the motors are at the top. Then rain doesn't run down the ram and corrode the motor and gearbox. Secondly, the plugs on the panels aren't reliable. I had one completely melt and have now replaced them with 50 amp Anderson plugs. One time the tracker worked really well was when we were camped in a deep forest. There were only a couple of times in the day when the sun came through gaps in the trees. At those times, the tracker pointed the panel directly at the sun and helped us maximise charging time. I've decided that it's time to try and prove that the tracker is worthwhile. So with an inline digital ammeter, see a description for a review, I've taken readings at regular intervals on two cloudless days at the same time of year. I recorded where the panel was at 12 noon and locked it in that position for the static non-tracking test. This has allowed me to produce two output curves and also record a total ampere hour reading for the day. The panel output is going through a Red Arc BCDC 1250D 50 amp controller into 600 ampere hours of AGM batteries. The batteries were significantly discharged that they could take the full available output from the Red Arc all day. So here is the graph of the panel output over those two similar days. One with the tracker tracking and the other with the tracker locked in the position it reaches at noon. A couple of things are of note. These tests were done in Narragin, Western Australia at 33 degrees south in early December where the sun rises in the southeast and sets in the southwest, not just east to west as might happen nearer the equator. Secondly, Trees across the paddock block the rising sun early in the morning, which is normally cloudy. Then, in the afternoon, it is cut off sharply by the neighbour's trees. My tracker reaches better to one side than the other. I feel a modification coming on to allow it to angle more to the west. With less tree interference, then there would be even more to be gained. Even so, the differences are stark. The inline meter recorded 126 ampere hours tracking against just 66 ampere hours when static. Cloudy days are interesting. The tracker points to the brightest part of the sky. So if the sun is blocked by a very dark cloud, there can be more to be gained by not pointing directly at the sun. Power consumed by the tracker over a 24 hour period is around 0.7 of an ampere hour, completely insignificant against the gain of tracking over static panels. So in conclusion, should you use a solar tracker? As always, it's horses for courses. If you travel daily or every other day or so and just need more capacity, then don't bother with solar panels. I'd just swap lead acid batteries for lithium iron phosphate at 80% discharge capacity against 50% and a longer service life. The extra battery cost would be less than a solar panel and tracker it certainly isn't needed. Make sure you charge through a proper charge controller like the Red Arc, not just a relay off the alternator output. If you are off grid and have huge energy needs and a large solar array, then the cost of a tracking system is probably going to be excessive. However, if you fall somewhere in the middle, if you stop for long periods of time and have energy needs that can be met by solar, then the case for a tracker starts to stand up. 
you can produce twice as much power per panel in midsummer. Over a year, I'd expect that figure to be higher as you compensate for the changing angle of the sun. Certainly our single 300 watt panel is coping with a 100 litre fridge freezer, lights, laptops, phone chargers, water pumps. The tracker was built with a mind to be extendable to take three panels. I've just not needed to use three yet. To me, it has proved its worth. The original stand shown in the videos cost me nothing but time and welding rods as it was built from scrap. A sleeker, lighter, twin panel, more portable version is on the design board. 30 amps for most of the day would more than meet our needs, especially 3 degrees nearer the equator at our off-grid base. Here we are losing only a little morning and evening. The nearer the Arctic Antarctic Circle you are, the more the case for a three axis tracking becomes. I'd be interested to hear if anyone has tried it in Scandinavia, the Shetlands, Canada, for example. So that's it for today. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. See you later.